this video I'm going to bring you guys along to discuss how anatomy uh, plays a part in my selection of a self-defense ammunition. So, first things first is uh, I like to consider the fact that uh, how I'm going to be stopping the threat, which is through physiological incapacitation, we're kind of past that point of negotiation and them changing their minds, and also this threat is probably going to be the the big bigger threat and not really the average sized person that a lot of people like to uh, prepare themselves for. So it's going to be worst case scenario, right? So kind of like uh, with hunters, you, you want to make sure that your ammunition not only is capable of performing uh, with the animal that you're working on, whether it be like a, a squirrel or a coyote or, you know, grizzly bear, you want to make sure that the ammunition actually can perform and also it wouldn't be bad to get uh, one of those trophies, like a big one, right? Every, Hunter always wants wants the big one, right? So the trophy kill, so to speak. So with that said, next thing to talk about is the uh, target zone. You know, the target zone, the primary target zone, there's, uh, there's all these different areas on the body that we could aim for, right? But the target zone, the main target zone is going to be right here, the CNS. It's the, it's the largest area on the body that you can aim for, the largest area that can cause a physical incapacitation through physiological means or physiological incapacitation in other words so there you have the heart lungs you have the uh, the arteries and stuff like that so um, basically you're going to cause death by exsanguination and the clock is ticking and you know it does take time for this to happen so you basically got to put a good amount of rounds in that area and cause enough damage uh, in a good amount of time uh, in order to and basically disrupt that area and in a way that's going to stop the fight quickly. So um, again we're going for physiological incapacitation not psychological so the clock is going to be ticking and we got to make it make our hits count uh, and our rounds have to be able to perform uh, so we don't want uh, we don't want rounds that are basically going to uh, try to get uh, to our target zone here our heart lungs and arteries and stuff uh, but they're going to stop short because they weren't uh, they weren't designed to go through bone. They were only designed to go through flesh. And this is where we get into uh, some of these concerns when it comes to anatomy. We are going to have to treat bone as a barrier because a lot of times what will happen is pistol rounds, rifle rounds, when they hit bone, they deviate off the intended trajectory. A lot of people don't understand that. But imagine if this is your aiming spot here. This is basically going to go right through to my heart. And... If you aim right here, and it'll probably hit like a rib bone. If it hits a rib bone, if it's a light round, uh, light for caliber or whatever, or like a, it goes full metal jacket or whatever, it can deviate off the intended trajectory. And instead of hitting the heart, it'll go here or here. It'll go on somewhere around the heart, but it won't cause a physiological uh, incapacitation. It'll deviate off the intended trajectory because you intended for it to go straight. That's why you aim there because you think it's going to continue on going, but it doesn't. There's a lot of rounds that even in ballistics gel, they'll do this. So things like the extreme penetrator, yeah, they'll get a consistent penetration, but they'll do this, or this, or this, or this. So they won't stay on course, and that's a big problem. That is a concern. What is it going to do when it goes through bone? And there are ways to test this, but anyways, that's something that I like to take into account. Also. I like to take into account that yes, I want a round that expands, and I don't want a full metal jacket round like the ex ex extreme penetrator. I want an expanding round because you got to understand that with pistol bullets, uh, this is for carry ammunition. For pistol bullets, the only thing that's going to be affected is going to be what that round touches, what that bullet touches. So if it's not expanding, you're only getting the diameter of whatever you're shooting. So bigger is better. So the more damage you can cause, the better, right? So you want to get something that expands. Now, if you get to the point where you're expanding too much, you are going to destroy its ability to penetrate deep enough to actually hit these the, the target zone and actually get there. Because the target zone isn't just this. It's actually, you got to think three-dimensionally because you got to get to a certain point. Maybe even reaching the spine would be a good thing. So if you want, if you want something that is going to get through bone and even get through those organs and possibly get to the spine, you got to take into account the target zone and the barriers that you're going to have to go through and kind of plan accordingly, something that penetrates a little bit deeper. So 
or resists deformation, has a little bit more tin in it, kind of like Critical Duty. Uh, typical has more tin, but you know they they can typically uh, uh, some sometimes depending on the caliber they can do this when they're just in gel, and even going through barriers they can do that as well, depending on uh, the caliber and stuff. So uh, with that said. Uh, the other thing is a lot of people like to say, well, uh, the FBI says 12 inches. The FBI is only considering the fact that they're hitting flesh. They're not even considering the fact that there's bone, and they're not even considering, uh, you know, staying on an intended trajectory. They're not even considering the fact that people have gotten bigger since they established that rule. So if you look at modern uh, department policies, as they... Now, typically, departments that actually have experience and actually have done their own research and figuring out um, this stuff, they want 14, 14 to 18 or, or whatever. They want more. And, you know, more is better as far as that goes. So a lot of people would talk about over-penetration. I feel that there's a lot of ignorance as far as, like, understanding the human body and especially its uh, ability to retain rounds, even full metal jacket rounds. Uh, so... If you can find plenty of cases where there were a lot of overpenetration, put a link below. I'd love to see this, uh, th these links of actual cases of overpenetration and stuff. Because you always hear anecdotes about it, but never real. There's never really any real good proof. Typically, what happens is a full metal jacket hits someone, it deviates off the intended trajectory, follows bone, and just goes around and uh, stops in skin or something like that. At least that's what I've seen personally. I've seen that happen even with rifle rounds. Uh, so anyways, um, with that said, uh, that's how anatomy kind of comes into play when we're considering a self-defense ammunition. we got to take into account our target zones. we got to understand that, our, that uh, the goal is to stop the threat by physiological incapacitation. we got to understand that target zone, what we're going to have to go through in order to get to that target zone. And kind of go from there and understand how the body can affect a bullet and what a bullet can do to the body. So, temporary cavity was already proven that it's not going to cause, you know, any permanent damage out of a pistol round uh, below a certain, you know, threshold of velocity. And they knew that in the 70s, but people are still dragging it on 50 years later. I don't understand why, but anyways, I can get on this for like a half hour, but I got to get out of here so I don't take up too much of your time. But thanks a lot for watching. Go ahead and leave them a comment below, and you guys have a good one.